Shalom. Kahlaimla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rukwakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Citations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Reincarnation is biblical. So just some scriptures I want to go into. Lord willing, my voice lasts and does not dry out. So I'm going to try to go through this quickly. So the spirits of the inhabitants of the earth come on the earth and return back to the heavenly realm. And then the cycle repeats itself. The same rule does not apply when it comes to dogs and cats and mules, goats, sheep. But the spirit of man returns back before the throne of the Most High. <clears throat> Let's prove that real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Let's go to verse 5. Now he that have wrought us for the selfsame thing is the Most High, who also have given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore, we are always confident that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So when the body dies, the body returns to the dust. From the dust we came to the dust we return. But the spirit belongs to the heavenly father. So it returns to he that him that gave it. <clears throat> Let's go to verse 9. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he have done, whether it be good or bad. <clears throat> so before the judgment seat of Hamashiach, all authority has been delegated to the Son of the Most High. He has been given all power over life and death, over the spirit of man. Knowing therefore the terror, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto the Most High. And I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. So the spirit or the soul is weighed in the balance. And we receive the due judgments for what we have done in this body. When the spirit is present on the earth. Let's go back. I'm going to go here first. Let's go to the book of Sirach. <coughs> The book of Sirach, chapter 40. Let's go here to verse. Yeah, we got to go to the top. Sirach 40, 
verse 1. Great travail is created for every man, and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam from the day that they go out of their mother's womb till the day that they return to the mother of all things. The imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. So we are afraid of what we don't know. We don't understand the entirety of the spiritual realm, the fourth dimension, the third heaven. From him that sitteth on a throne of glory unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes, from him that weareth purple and a crown, unto him that is clothed with a linen frock, wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife, and in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep do change his knowledge. So our spirit goes through a period of transition. Let's keep going. A little or nothing is his rest, and afterward he is in his sleep, as in a day of keeping watch, trouble in the vision of his heart, as if he were escaped out of a battle. When all is safe, he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing. Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners. So what we've done in our body, it's a price to be paid. So our spirit must go before the judgment seat and return back to the earth with that price tag of what we did in this body. And so on our deathbed, we're contemplating these things. So our mind is racing and we're thinking about crossing over with the events or the actions we committed on earth. Such things happen unto all flesh, both man and beast, and that is sevenfold more upon sinners, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. So these spirits that died, <coughs> excuse me, these spirits that died by the flood were appointed these calamities. And the spirits came back in their lot and committed the similar crimes or offenses that they committed in their previous lives. <clears throat> Idolatry, adultery, spiritual fornication, murder, rape, sodomy, oppression. These things are created for the wicked and for their sakes came the flood. All things that are of the earth. Here's where I want to go. <clears throat> So rock 40 and 11. <coughs> All things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again. And that which is of the waters doeth return into the sea. It's just like when you see a waterfall. And then that flows into rivers. And then the rivers flow into the seas and the oceans. The spirit is similar. It's like waters that flow and similar to the air or the wind that we breathe. So our spirit is an element 
made of pure energy and fire. Let's read this again. So we're reading about reincarnation. <clears throat> All things that are of the earth shall turn to the earth again, and that which is of the waters doeth return into the sea. See, let's go from there <clears throat> to Psalm 72. And this is at the return of King Solomon, which is Yahawashai. Psalm 72 and 4. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. Notice that he, Yahawashai, is compared to the waters, the rain. So that spiritual element of our Lord and Savior is returning back to the earth. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. So that rain can be destructive to the wicked, just like in the days of Noah, the flood, and bring life and salvation and deliverance to the Lord's elect of Israel. So it's twofold. How do we know that? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once I learn how to spell, we'll go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. See, so Yahweh shine nourishes, heals, and preserves his fine grape cluster of the elect. <clears throat> Psalms 37. Let's go to verse 1. But it's not going to go well for the wicked, Edomites, and those that are in bed with him. <clears throat> the book of Psalms, chapter 37, verse 1. A Psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. So this rain is a two-edged sword, the spirit of Yahawashai, the word made flesh, for they soon shall be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. So the new covenant, <clears throat> the Israelites will be in the land, the promised lands, not walking around here or street teaching, standing up here on the, on the soil of Babylon. That's not the new covenant. We're in a transitory period of grace. And we'll no longer be teaching when the new covenant, excuse me, <coughs> when the new covenant is enacted. Let's go on here. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Let's go to verse, verse 8. There is no man that hath power 
over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. So that penalty, that price, price tag must be closed out. It must be balanced on scales of justice. <clears throat> there is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit. Neither have he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war. Neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All this have I seen and applied my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one man ruleth over another to his own hurt. So that spirit is going to return to be judged on the earth. So that hurt is the recompense or payback for what that particular soul has dished or issued out. A total system of equity and balance unto the most high, the universal manager of justice and judgment. Ecclesiastes 8 and 10. And so I saw the wicked buried who had come and gone from the place of the holy and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This is also vanity. So the wicked seeks to be wicked in the heavenly realm, the fourth dimension. So they're memory of them is forgotten. They become nothing, a nobody <clears throat> here on earth and in the spiritual realm they are in harmony. There is no wickedness. All souls return back unto the heavenly father and before the lamb, the judgment seat. And all power has been delegated to Yahweh Shai. Let's go here. And this is one of my favorites. Speaking of reincarnation, <clears throat> the, there was a wicked sect of scribes and Pharisees that were always trying to play stump the chump with our Lord and Savior, trying to trick him and trying to see if they can get him to speak something falsely or erroneously so that they can accuse him. <clears throat> but not all the scribes and Pharisees were wicked. I want to go here. This is always a chapter that makes me laugh when I read this because Yahweh Shai sent them away like a dog in between his legs. Excuse me, sent them away like a dog with his tail between his legs. That's how he, he embarrassed them. Let's <clears throat> go oh, here. Matthew 22, verse 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahawashai asked them, saying, What think ye of Hamashiach? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. Now we got to take our time and envision this. They're proud as hell. They're supposed to be experts or masters of the Holy Scriptures. So they're like, hey, hey, well, well, well the son of David, that's the son of David. You know, we got we to gotta visualize this thing here. <clears throat> Matthew 22 and 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahawashai asked them, saying, What think ye of Mashiach? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. He saith unto them, How then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. 
If David then call him Lord, how is he his son? And no man was able to answer him a word, neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. So the wicked are confounded by reincarnation. It is the embodiment of the volume of the book. <clears throat> See, let's go to <coughs> one moment. Without understanding reincarnation, it's not possible to understand the Bible. And none of the wicked shall understand. See, let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 2. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious, and in death of a man there is no remedy, neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. So in the wicked's mindset, they can do whatever they want, and not have to pay for their crimes. What crimes? See, they don't believe in recompense, punishment, judgment. That's why a fool has said in his heart, there is no God, because they are deifying themselves, exalting themselves above the supreme power and authority over our soul. They don't have to necessarily say there is no God. It's in their mind. Notice a fool have said in his heart. That's a mindset. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious. And in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall hereby. For we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke, and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. The key phrase here is that the wicked reason with themselves, but not are right. So they are off from the understanding of the doctrine. They don't understand that our souls are eternal and return to judgment or before the judgment seat of the Most High, given over to the Lamb. So that's why the wicked get confounded with this book. So we're going to go here to... So King David <clears throat> bows down to Yahawashai, which is King Solomon. Let's get that. <clears throat> Let's go to First Kings, First Kings, Chapter One. I'll start reading it, verse thirty. Even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly. Solomon, thy son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. King David is giving this order, following the will of the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, let my Lord, King David, live forever. In those days, 
our women understood that the sons of Jacob are Yashur Allah, Yashur Allah, the prince of the power, lords on the earth. <clears throat> and King David said, Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Yehida, and they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and call Solomon my son to ride upon my own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. Now this is very significant. King David is showing that that authority is being transferred over to King Solomon, which also helps to fulfill prophecy. This is this is a powerful move here. Let's go here to Zechariah nine. So this is going to be fulfilled when Yahweh Shai showed up and was in the midst of the apostles. And we'll get that in the New Testament. But it's also a indication that that power and authority is going to be transferred over to King Solomon forever. <coughs> Let's go to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a coat, the foal of an ass. See, let's keep going. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off and he shall speak peace unto the heathen and his dominion shall be from sea even to sea and from the river even to the ends of the earth. Now where else have we read this? Let's go back to Psalms 72. King Solomon did not have dominion from sea to shining sea. This is going to be Yahweh Shai inheritance at his second return. <clears throat> uh, remember it's that right here. Psalm 72 verse 8. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river unto the ends of the earth. So this is Yahweh Shai. But when he returns back the second time, he's coming back with all power, glory, dominion. So this move by King David showed what's going to occur in the future. And Yahweh Shai made the apostles, let's go ahead and read it. <clears throat> See, the triumphal entry, Matthew 21, verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Yahawashai two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a coat with her, loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord have need of them, and straightway he will send them. So Yahweh is showing that Zechariah chapter 9 must be fulfilled in this setting right here. But that sitting on the mule or the ass is also showing that he's going to occupy the high horse of power. 
at this time, Matthew 21 and 4, all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Yahawashai commanded them, and brought the ass and the coat, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. Let's go back to King David. So King Solomon, the son of David, is also the Lord and authority over King David. So this is showing a transition of authority, not just back then, but also in the future to come. First Kings 1 and 30 even as I swear unto thee by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, thy son, shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead. Even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and did reverence to the king and said, Let my Lord King David live forever. And King David said, Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your Lord, and call Solomon my son to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him there, king over Israel. And blow ye with the trumpet and say, God save King Solomon. Then ye shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne. For he shall be king in my stead. And I have anointed and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. Let's go down to here. That's one of, one of the key points here. Let's go to verse 43. And while he yet spake, behold, Jonathan, the son of Abiathar, the priest, came, and Adonijah said unto him, Come in, for thou art a valid man and bringest good tidings. And Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, Verily our Lord King David hath made Solomon king. And king Solomon was more of a poetic man and understanding the dark sayings and deep mysteries of the will of the Most High. And Adonijah was more of a warrior, a man of war, a mighty man. Let's go down to the key point right here. <clears throat> Verse 46. And also Solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom. And King Solomon's reign was 40 years of peace. But that four, or mercy, that represents mercy and grace, is also a foreshadowing of the future when he returns the second time. So he is the mercy seat. Even King David needs a savior and salvation. So King David needs a savior, mercy. Verse 47, and moreover, the king's servants came to bless our Lord, King David, saying, God, make the name of Solomon better than thy name and make his throne greater than thy throne. And the king bowed himself upon the bed. This is showing you right here 
that the second return of the Messiah is not King David. King David is under Yahawashai or King Yahawashai. So this is not based on a fleshly physical age, but based on the spirit created from on high, the will of the heavenly father. And also thus said the king, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which hath given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even seeing it. Now, this is heavy because King Solomon is going to be raised unto King David. Let's read this again. <clears throat> and also, thus said the king, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which have given one to sit on my throne this day, mine eyes even seeing it. Once again, a future recycling of these events are going to play out here on earth. But the second return of Yahweh Shai is going to be an eternal kingdom of excellency, rulership, and dominion over the entire earth. King Solomon only ruled over the ancient world. <clears throat> Let's get ready to close out. Let's look at this mule. Mule. See? Offspring of a donkey and a horse. A male donkey that mates with a female horse. So this is what Yahawashai sat on. He sat on King David's mule. And when he showed up on the earth as Shai, the first time he rode an ass or a mule, which also foreshadows him coming back to be that proverbial high horse or ruler over the earth. Matter of fact, where is that at? It's in Revelations. Oh, here. Revel, we'll close out here. My voice is very dry tonight. Revelation. And I want to thank the Spirit for working through El Demonagon for correcting me. And when I say revelations, sound like a shave head, shave face pastor teaching lies. So, the water, and how about Shem, and how shy? It's revelation. Revelation 6 and 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth, conquering and to conquer. Now he's riding on a chariot with horse power. This is a white chariot, but that horse represents power, authority. Hence we use the phrase, he is sitting on his high horse. He needs to come down from his high horse. So, when King David had young King Solomon riding on his mule, then that was a symbol of a transition of authority. King Solomon, <coughs> King David. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying all praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, or Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor 
to those that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect scattered abroad. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Baraka thumb, Kwame Sharala, and the Bible. We got next, Lord willing.